Coming up on Out and About Art, you're going to hear about Polk State College's newest internship opportunity for students, find out how the Polk County Tax Collector is impacting arts in the local area, and get a look at Florida Southern College's most recent theater performance. It's all coming up, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Out and About Art. I'm your host, Dion Spires. Last August, I introduced you to a little art gallery in Winter Haven called Outer Space. They had just had their grand opening and the owner spoke of dreams of expanding and influencing the art community here in Polk County. Today, we see one of those dreams begin to come true. Outer Space just began its first semester hosting an internship program for Polk State College students in which they'll hone their art skills and learn how to succeed in the business of art. I caught up with some of the staff and their current interns to find out more. So Outer Space is um, uh, an incubator space for local artists, but it's also a platform for uh, emerging student artists to kind of start their career as a professional artist. It's essentially a partnership between the Polk Museum of Art, Polk State College, and Arts Ensemble. Polk State College uh, has an art program, an art transfer track program, and at the end of that transfer track program, our advanced students are applying for a internship here at the Outer Space Gallery. So I've helped uh, bring in students uh, who are qualified advanced students uh, to have a studio space here at the gallery, and so they'll be working, helping uh, the artist, helping the gallery run, and also having a space to work on their own projects. I was taking a lot of Holly's classes, and she actually told us about it as soon as she heard about it. She said that it would be coming up and that it's something that we, she would definitely see us being interested in. And I, I mean, this is what I want to do. So she told me pretty much as soon as she found out about it. I knew when, when we needed to start submitting applications. And I used the couple months that she found out about it prior to build up my portfolio to get ready for it, to apply for it, to make sure everything looked nice, and then send it in. The two interns we have at Outer Space Gallery uh, this year are Crystal and Scott, and both of these students have went through numerous classes with me, with Professor David Woods, with Professor Andrew Coombs over at Polk State College. So from my perspective, I've seen these guys really survive. They've went through all the classes, they have started to find their own style, their own identity, which is amazing, and their own style is emerging, and they're at this point, or at this crux, where they're really trying to uh, make their own, make their own way, and that's so rewarding as a professor to see that, but what I'm most excited about for the interns is that their work, both of them, is it's very unique, and Trent and Adam are so creative and, and so productive and prolific in this space, and their artworks are very different. Um, Trent's is figurative um, and has sort of a playful narrative and Adam's is much more abstract um, pattern and organization and composition based and so I think those two qualities and those artists are going to influence these interns so much and it's exactly what they need and that's why Crystal and Scott were a perfect fit. Both of them need that influence and they need influence outside of their professors, outside of their faculty, outside of that controlled environment. They need that inspiration and um, sort of off the cuff, oh, I see what Adam's doing in his studio, I might try some of that, I might splatter some paint, I might try to build a sculpture today. They need this, they need more exposure. And so I'm so thrilled to see where they're gonna go and how they're gonna apply what Polk State College gave them and what these artists uh, in this gallery are gonna give them. Trent's uh, work incredibly inspired me when I learned about the internship because I started researching him and his dolls were super creepy and terrifying and it's exactly what I wanted to be doing but just in a different version and in 3D and I was just so excited to be able to get the opportunity to work with him and once in a while I'll bring him in here to ask him about my dolls then he'll tell me little things that I can tweak to make it um, darker more more of a, a darker um, subtle taste um, just uh, lighten this or put this in shadow and it'll just it's it's just really cool to be able to um, ask their opinion. We really wanted to work with them on 
primarily portfolio development. So with Trent being a professional artist and, and being in festivals and galleries around the country, he could really work with them from a business standpoint in terms of developing their portfolio, uh, what to kind of expect as a full-time professional artist, because I think a lot of students don't realize you know, how much work is involved. I think that's one thing that's lacking with art education in some of the colleges is that you do not have a strong business uh, class or coursework to help the students. Uh, Polk State College recently developed a portfolio and resume development course that kids take at the end of their uh, time at Polk State College. So it's sort of a capstone course and that's really where we found most of the students for the internship. For us it's really important because we don't want our students to be sitting in their rooms of their home making art and not showing it to anyone. The business part is a way to get it out there. So from Polk State, we're all about getting students jobs. We're all about getting students money so that they can survive and not make art a hobby. So for us, that is super important. It's at least half of the problem here. So we are so excited that the gallery uh, artists are helping and they're helping them to, to succeed because it reflects wonderfully on the museum, on the gallery, and on Polk State College. The business side of it, is good because I mean they're working artists and they know right now what's what sells how to do it the way the things that you need to do but other than just like oh here's something nice and beautiful and they know all the ins and outs and everything that that I don't to come into a studio with actual artists around that go around the country showing their artwork um, uh, Adam who works at the um, Polk Museum of Art I think we will learn more about um, uh, curating uh, shows, um, uh, hanging correctly, learning what kind of art goes with what other art and what doesn't. I want to see this internship, as I said before, become this sort of prestigious opportunity, a competitive prestigious opportunity for artists coming out of Polk State College. And what I want to see for them is I want scholarship money. I want students leaving here, either becoming professional artists or getting full rides, half rides to colleges all over the nation uh, studying art and design. That's what I want to see. We want to see these interns to come in and really take ownership of, of the gallery, essentially. And we want to see them being the, the primary managers and you know the point contact for, for all of these artists to curate shows. And, you know, for me personally, I, I really think that this opportunity will allow me to grow as an artist, just as the interns are, are perhaps getting some additional exposure outside of Polk State to some artists and some new ideas. You know, I also, and, and, and probably Trent too, um, would like to get exposure to, you know, what these students are doing and, and you know, where they're coming from. And, you know, I'm, I'm expecting to learn as much from them as I hope they, they do from us. You wouldn't think you know, Winter Haven would have something like that. Having that locally here where everyone can can come and see it, especially this gallery, you know, it's open. People can come in here and, and see what we're doing, see, see the different shows that they have. It's, it's huge. It's just going to help open the door um, for opportunities for all the emerging artists at Polk State. So I'm hoping more internships open up with other galleries um, down the road. What an amazing opportunity for aspiring art students. The program is currently open to Polk State College students as well as recent alumni. For more information on the program, call Jane Waters Thomas at 863-293-2700 or contact Holly Scoggins at Polk State College. Speaking of emerging artists, Polk County tax collector Joe Tedder and his staff have been active in supporting the arts in Polk County schools with their kids tag art program each year. The program serves as an art competition in which fifth grade students design their very own license plates. After the plates have been reviewed, select students are awarded at multiple ceremonies. Here's more on the event. I love art. I have my own sketchbooks and my mom teaches me a lot. It really gives you a chance to express yourself and your creativity so you don't have to hide everything inside you. Kids Tag Art started about 10 years ago, and it actually started where we would go as members of the tax collector's office, the senior staff, we'd be asked to go and speak to kids in the Great American Teach-In. And so we would go and try to figure out, okay, what am I gonna talk to a bunch of third graders 
or fifth graders about the tax collector's office that's going to be interesting to them. So nine times out of ten, we would just grab a bunch of the specialty tags, a manatee cat tag or the challenger tag or whatever tag we could find, Miami Dolphins, and we would take it to the elementary school. And we would show the kids a tag and we would ask them, guess what tag this is? And so we'd go through the tags and that's how we'd fill up our time when we do the Great American Teaching. And then we would tie that back to our office actually issues these tags. Well, usually about a week or so later, we would receive thank you letters from the kids in the classroom. And what was cool is they would write, you know, thank you so much for coming, and then they would draw a little tag, their own little tag that they wanted to come up with. And we just kind of sat around the table and said, wouldn't it be neat if we could figure out a way in which kids could take this as a way to express themselves through art on a tag and then actually have that tag produced. So you teach the kids how they're designing something that actually creates a product. Joe walked in one day and gave me uh, a folder of student designs and, said, and threw it on my desk and said, hey, Eric, see if you can do something with this and told me the story that you heard uh, about their Great American Teach-In experiences year after year. And I was blown away with the quality of the art. And that, that actually is what motivated me because I, like Joe, felt like there's, a, there's an opportunity here we, we shouldn't miss. Kids Tag Art is a wonderful art project drawing contest, but it's also much more. It helps demonstrate the importance of teaching creative learning. When all of us adults were in school, do you remember we were graded by color and inside the line? Well now, we're asking students to color outside the lines and they are pushing those boundaries for self-expression. We can't thank uh, Mr. Tedder and his team for all that they have done over the last 10 years to bring much needed dollars into our classrooms and to help our students to explore and find themselves in ways that they might not have ever dreamed of finding. We have raised, uh, over the 10 years, we've raised close to $300,000 have been infused back into the elementary school classrooms. And this money doesn't go back to the teachers where they buy markers and papers. The school board is helping them with things like this. They're doing really cool things like digital labs or pottery systems. They're actually going above and beyond what you would typically find in an elementary school classroom. Now we can see eventually every single county in this state having a kids tag art program. And when you think about what we've been able to do in a short period of time, that kind of financial commitment and contribution through the sale of products that these kids have created, uh, it can have, we think, a really dramatic impact on the elementary arts program. So we're thrilled about the, being part of that impetus for it. I'm here tonight because I just wanted to echo the, at the county level what you will most likely hear from the school representatives. This is an important program and I am so thrilled to see each and every one of you here tonight supporting your students. This is what it's all about, having parent involvement here with the kids. The calendar works like this. Uh, in the summer we prepare the kits that go out to the teachers and we have a teacher kickoff in mid-August uh, just before school starts. Gives the teachers everything they need to launch the program in the classroom. The classroom design phase uh, goes about two months and it ends about mid-October. From mid-October to December, uh, D-Print does all the production. We've been partners with uh, Kids Tag Art for the last five years now and are producing tags to benefit the arts programs in the different schools. What we're doing is actually uh, printing with an inkjet printer uh, with water-based inks um, to a transfer type paper. We print it in reverse image so that when we take and transfer it to the tag it looks correct. Um, so it's just an inkjet process printing. And then once that's done we take it down and subject it to 400 degrees heat. And what happens with that heat process is it turns the ink into a vapor, and the vapor actually embeds into the surface of the aluminum. We used to print on a uh, polyethylene material, and the polyethylene material is a good outdoor uh, durable product, but um, 
probably a couple years uh, where it becomes brittle. Now we're sublimating onto aluminum, and the aluminum is much more durable outdoors. Also it gives brighter, richer colors than uh, printing on polyethylene. We do the judging uh, around the same time in October and announce all of those finalists for the specific design awards that are given throughout the spring. We have uh, Legoland sponsors uh, one of the tags and it's called the Imagine, uh, which is basically if kids draw a tag that has connection to Legoland, uh, they are, have an opportunity to be a, um, awarded through Legoland. Southern Home sponsors um, home sweet home tag, so some kids like to draw designs of a home uh, or a landscape with their house, and so Southern Home sponsors that. Uh, the Florida Heart Research uh, does a Heart Smart tag, which is kids that if they draw a tag that's related to uh, heart health, uh, maybe hearts running or different things to deal with activity to keep your heart healthy, uh, they look at all those tags and pick what they think the best tags are related to that. So there's a number of different entities, sponsors, that they come in and say, not only do we want to give you some money uh, to help underwrite the tags, we actually want to participate in encouraging kids to design a tag with a particular theme, and then we'll pick the best tags that we saw within that theme and award the kids with uh, uh, some type of gift. Did you know that students who study art are four times more likely to be recognized for academic achievement? that they are three times more likely to be awarded for school attendance, and that art studies and activities help keep high-risk high dropout students in school. That's why Southern Homes continues to be the major sponsor of Kids Tag Art. The creative spirit is what invents everything. So um, it's, it is very important for the kids to have uh, exposure to the arts and to understand art um, because it, it drives everything. My experience was pretty amazing because you get like to have your artwork made into something different and new that you can use. Kids Tag Art, it's, it's now got a life of its own. Uh, we love to continue to support it and host it and I'm sure long after I'm gone Kids Tag Art will uh, exist for the Tax Collector's Office and for Polk County. Um, I really want to help see it grow uh, throughout the state of Florida. Uh, I'm eagerly tracking the uh, data to find out you know what the financial contribution uh, could mean for Floridians to have this program uh, move county to county throughout the state. And uh, I'm on board as long as, as long as I can. A display of kids tag art participants artwork will be in the Frostproof Art Gallery through the end of the month and will continue to relocate occasionally through July. For more information and a list of events to find out when they'll be in your area, visit www.polktaxes.com slash kid tags. Just this past February, Florida Southern Theater students got to go back to their childhood to put on their second to last performance of the school year. The 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee was a hilarious comedy in which half of the cast got to perform as children and present fun music complete with audience participation. It was a unique theater experience and no two nights were ever exactly the same. Take a look at some footage from the performance. This is a delightful show about children in a spelling bee. But as if you see the show, you'll see that's really more than that. It's about hope and uh, disappointment and all sorts of things that adults go through too, but you get to watch it through the eyes of children. I think it's about some misfit kids finding a way to fit in. Kids spelling words. That's it. It's simple. I'm trying to go more in depth than it has to be, but it's simple. Just kids spelling words. <laughs> I remember last year I asked Christy, I said, what show might you want to do? And she, this was one of the ones that she mentioned. And when I read it, I, I saw parts for a whole bunch of our kids. So I said, yeah, okay, why not? And uh, you know, that's why I chose it. This is a show I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Um, since I, I, I saw it on Broadway with the original cast and stuff. Um, 
back in the day. I think it was like 2006, six, seven, or something like that. Um, and it was, uh, it just of course caught my eye. I was really excited when I found out we were doing this show because I love uh, the music. It's great. It's so much fun. It's a really light show. Sometimes we do some really heavy stuff. And I just came out of chess, which was like for me like so much work and it was pretty heavy. So I was really looking forward to something much lighter. This is a fun show. We can just be free, you know? So it was a, it was a, a huge like, like weight off of our backs. Like, oh, we got to do this show and it, it'll be fun. There's improv in the show, you know? So it's, it's just, a, it was just a great process the way it is. In the show, we have, I'd say about like 30%. 30% of it is improv. With all the, with all the uh, volunteers, we have four volunteer spe spellers, um, and all of their words are improvised and stuff. We'll have an idea, but things change at a moment's notice. Um, we ad lib quite a bit when like people are talking, we'll be just saying just nonsense in the back just to either make someone laugh on stage or just to add to the, the scene in, in any way we can. It's exciting and scary, I think, because it's different every night. Um, it's just unpredictable. But this, just the, the heart in this and just the, the improv, uh, improvisation is huge with me. So um, having a show that involves that and, and I love singing and, and it's just a fun, fun, fun show. is an incredible woman. Um, she really, really is. She, she has a vision, but she still lets you find it. She lets us act. She lets the actors act. I, I've worked with directors that tell you every move to make, every, every single thing you have to do, they tell you, they act through you. She allows us to act. She allows us to bring our own sp something special to the character. And I, I, that's, that's fun. That's what being an actor is about, is, is finding those things. Yes, it might take some time, but she'll, she'll have an idea of, yeah, we want something different of this, but, but she won't tell you what she wants. She'll say, like, figure it out. Like, what would your character do? Figure it out. I like to um, work with the actors and then, you know, sort of give them where to go. And they, they all came in with a, a pretty good knowledge of who their characters were. And uh, then I sort of watch them and see where their impulses are. You know, so if they seem like they want to do something, it's like I'll try to go with that, you know. So that's always really fun for me. It's really interesting um, because each director here has a different style of directing and Mary T is so relaxed and she's she open to trying anything. You do whatever you want and if she doesn't like it, she'll tell you, which is good. So, I mean, you have free range to, to try anything. It's super fun. And I think that's what you have to do to help you get into character when you're playing a young kid you know what I'm saying you got to just let let everything be free so I feel like it was a, a really good experience with that I definitely wanted to be Logan because she gets to be super weird and I love being weird. I just started with the lisp in, in the stage directions it says she has a lisp. So I started from there and it just kind of got weirder and weirder. Like the little yes thing that I do, um, I kind of like made up one part of it and then just kept adding to it and now it is what it is. So it just kind of developed over time, just trying new things and experimenting. Cass, be quiet for one second. The actual band for Spelling Bee is really small. It's two keyboards, a drummer, a cello, and a woodwind player who doubles on many different instruments, clarinet, flute, piccolo, saxophone, oboe. Uh, but we have all of them. So we have the entire orchestra. So sometimes in a college setting, you only have the size for maybe half of the orchestra, or similarly, we did chorus line. Well, chorus line basically calls for a huge orchestra because it's, you know, of that old style of musical theater writing. But for this show, we have everybody. So the entire score is filled out. So it's really, it's a really nice sound. And from a music director perspective, it's, it's again, it's kind of easy or a joy because when I cue things, they're actually there. I don't have to try to double them on a piano or something. Christiane Roll, 
who is the musical director and my voice coach and stuff, and I, I could not have done any of this without her at this school. Without her, it, it, it would very different experience, so very grateful for her. She's taught me a lot about the real world and not just the, the techniques and all that. She's taught me about the real world, the auditions and the, the agents and, and what to find and, and what to expect when I go out there. She is like the light of this department. I'm like There are several people who are, you know, like amazing, but Christiane is, she takes the cake, I think. She's incredible. She knows what she's talking about. Um, she also has a great voice, so she can relate, you know what I'm saying, to people that can sing and stuff like that. Um, and she's really helpful, you know, she'll, she'll start from, from the beginning and then they'll, she'll help you grow into what you need to, whether it's a song, whether it's a show, you know. Um, and she, she just, she really knows what she's talking about. She's very smart and she's helpful. And there, there's been art forever, and there should be art forever. And it's just the freedom and the creativity, and, and it allows uh, children to, to pretend and, and use their imagination and, and do what they want to do, whatever they want to do, and not, be, and not be chastised for it because they, they're, looked funny, they're looked at funny. Um, and it allows adults to be children, and, and when you're old, to, to be a child and, and still have that imagination and, and the creativity flowing. And, it's, it's all I know. By doing more theater and attracting more people to the theater, we get that out there and people have more of an understanding and they maybe see shows that touch on things that are personal to them in their life. People always love entertainment. I don't care what anybody says, they love entertainment, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like any type of art, you can find some type of re like, re like relation or connection with it that anybody can be amused by it, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's that, that's the main thing we have to keep alive as far as the arts. I have to talk from a perspective of a mother, I guess. I have two daughters, and so they come to see all the shows here. And they're getting involved with music and theater just because they're my daughter and they hear it in our house. But they're getting educated at a young age by coming and seeing these shows here. Not only here at our theater department, but over in Branscombe Auditorium and our music department as well. So from a very young age, they're learning to appreciate music. They're learning how to, in a sense, behave in a the theater, to listen um, in this day and age when there's short attention spans. And kids need iPads. Well, you don't. You sit in theater and there's so many things to look at and you learn from a young age to be interested in that and to be appreciative of that. So I think even just from a child perspective, it's a great opportunity to come and see free or even very inexpensive productions to get them hooked, even if they're not going to pursue this professionally, that they become the next generation of audience members. I think people think, oh, you have to be older to come to see the theater or to come to see an orchestra concert, and I don't believe that. I think children are, are ready to see that, and it's right here. If you missed the performance or you caught it and you just want more, Florida Southern College is presenting their final performance of the 2015-2016 school year with a Midsummer Night Stream later this month. The show runs April 7th through 10th and April 14th through 17th right here in Buckner Theater and it partners the Florida Southern College Theater Department with Florida Dance Theater. That's all I have in store for today, but of course there's plenty of upcoming art events to come out and get involved with. Check out this list of some of the upcoming art events and be sure to tune in next month to see more art out and about.